Welcome, future kings of Africa, to Geek Salad's Retro Movie Review from the Geek Salad Podcast. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. And as we have all month long, we are joined by our gracious co-host, Todd. Hi, everybody. And joining us yet again, last time you saw her, was on our um, Princess and the Frog review a couple weeks ago. We've got the uh, wonderful Nick from the Black Girls Do Stuff 2 podcast. Hey. Hey. Oh. I um I promised that she had to do this one because I wanted her to do Princess and the Frog, and I'm like, I really, I, I really need to, to, I need to reward her. <laughs> That's what I need to do right now, um, <laughs> because I know it was tough to do uh, Princess and the Frog, and as you stated to me, uh, Nala is is the uh, the first Black Disney princess. The, the only one I acknowledge. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, um, for those of you who are new to the show or have not seen a show where um, Nick has joined us, Nick, tell us a little bit about uh, Black Girls Do Stuff Too. Yeah, so Black Girls Do Stuff Too, we do pop culture, lifestyle, comic books, movies, etc. Basically, it was started just to lend a voice to the conversation that didn't include us. And so we wanted to let people know that, you know, we like comics, we like movies, we do stuff too. And so it was kind of tongue in cheek, but then it stuck. So. Yeah. It's always great too when I'm like trying to find like I if I have to go on Twitter to mm -hmm. go message her or something like that every single time without fail and I mean <laughs> I mean no disrespect to it but I'm like where are my black girls at where are my black girls at where are my black girls at and <laughs> God help me there's me say that <laughs> what black girls oh Nick you know <laughs> I've talked about Nick yeah. before. <laughs> So, yeah. So, 1994 is The Lion King. At the time, the highest grossing uh, animated film of all time. And until um, until a few years ago, it was the movie that I'd seen the most in theaters. Wow. wow. So, at five times in theaters. Wow. I, you know, do you know what movie unseated The Lion King? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. The Force Awakens. Oh. What's that? The Weekend. Force Awakens. Oh no, no, no! I'm talking about um, animated. Oh, Frozen. Who cares about your streak, Mike? Come on. Actually, no, it was not Frozen, Mike. No. No, it was um, Finding Nemo. That's a good one too. Hmm. Finding Nemo outgrossed it. I and I think they're just. Go they, I think at this point they were just going off of uh, domestic gross, and then um, a year later was defeated by Sh Shrek Two. Ugh. Yeah, which held it forever, and then Frozen. And now Frozen 2 is the highest grossing animated film of all time. Yep. Frozen 2. Okay. <laughs> I'm cool yeah. with that. Frozen, I enjoyed Frozen 2 a lot. So let me um start by uh, asking you all the question. I'll start with you, Nick. When was the first time you saw The Lion King? Um. So I saw Lion King in theaters. I Yeah, I'm pretty sure we saw it in theaters um, back when I was in like elementary school. Mm -hmm. We went and uh, I don't know if it was a class field trip or like me and a bunch of my cousins. So I have like 30 cousins. So <laughs> it was like me and a bunch of my cousins went or it was like a class field trip, same amount of kids regardless. So like back then. So I guess, yeah, that would be 1994 then. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. It was, it was released summer 94. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. I still remember seeing like that movie in theaters. It's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Todd, how about you? Also in theaters, I have a very vivid memory of seeing it in downtown Worcester, Massachusetts, represent uh, at what is now the Hanover Theater, which was previously a movie theater, really, really rundown movie theater. So uh, I remember seeing it there. And then um, for Christmas that year, they they did a double feature where you could, they had two theaters. And I remember this very vividly that you could pick which movie you want to see um, between Lion King or Ace Ventura and, and at Christmas. So they must have had a second run somewhere. And I, I was like, I've seen The Lion King already. I want to see Ace Ventura because I'm a, I was a nine-year-old boy. So <laughs> fun fun fact. Wow. I can oh. see the similarities between those two. Yeah, they're the same movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. And this wasn't even When Nature Calls. This was the yeah. first Ace Ventura. First Ace Ventura. Yep. Wow. Crazy. There you go. Um, Mike, you? I saw it in theaters. Um, Five times. Yeah. Uh, I, I, if I had to guess, I'm going to say I probably saw it in the Lemister Theater. 
Because I don't think there was a Fitchburg Theater at the time. You're right. I, I don't think Cinema World was open back then. No, I, I don't think that one opened until at least the late 90s, if not the early 2000s. Okay. Cool. So. Cool. I um, saw it once in theaters on its on its first run uh, back at the old uh, Showcase Cinema in Framingham, Massachusetts. Mm. Back when that place was was actually a really really nice theater before the uh the rebuild that is now the amc theater today so i guess mike and todd you never venture out that way and nick i guarantee you've never been out to framingham mass before no only no. been to mass twice <laughs> yeah well, my friend yeah. forget that i worked in framingham for 10 years so that's true but you no, worked on not... okay so i did go to amc so. okay yeah. I try to avoid framing him whenever possible. Yeah, I, I still have an AMC gift card that I've had for like three years. I haven't used it yet, but it's only because it may as well be in China. It just is that far away from me. Uh, this, the closest one is in Kingsborough. That's still, again, you, you, you might as well be telling me I have to go to Spain for that. <laughs> it's only a half hour. Come on, dude. Yeah, I know, but, you know, I got most of my viewings of The Lion King um, because of a little store that we call Suncoast. I'll, I'll do it for you guys. Oh, do I have to drink this way? Drink! <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Whenever I, whenever I tell, uh, tell a Suncoast story. Okay. Okay, yeah. I got it. <laughs> and, I mean, I, is it just me, or was this movie, like, everywhere the summer of 94? Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I... So I have my shirt right here. My oh, very shirt. nice. I, I'm wearing mine as well. Yeah. See, I wore it specifically for you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I just remember having everything. Like I wanted a simple toy. I wanted the McDonald's toy or Burger King. One of them had them. Probably McDonald's because they Actually, usually. I remember them. distinctly it was Burger King. Oh, okay. So it was I, Burger King. So yeah. yeah. So like, I had the toys and like the soundtrack. Of course, I was in love with Jonathan Taylor Thomas at the time. So <laughs> I definitely. He like supported everything he did. It was so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was just one of those things. Like I just loved it. I just loved it so much. And it was literally everywhere. Like you everybody talked about it. Yeah. That was I mean, peak home improvement. Mm-hmm. It was. was. President Jonathan Taylor Thomas, for all you John Mulaney fans. <laughs> President Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I um yeah, I really remember this was everywhere. And I mean, this is this is the first time they had like a really loaded cast. Like, you know, other movies had like one or two celebrities. Yeah. You know, obviously the most you know, the most the, the most evident of that is uh, Robin Williams and Aladdin. Yeah. But pretty yeah. much everybody else in that movie were just voice actors. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, you got, yeah. <laughs> well, well there was one other, Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yep. You, you got me, Mike. You got me. Yeah, um, <laughs> going back like Oliver and Company, Billy Joel, right, and right. Um, yeah, you know a few others, but not no one huge. Bette right? Midler, Cheech, uh, Cheech Marin. Cheech Marin, yep, yeah. But, I mean, this one you've got Matthew Broderick. Oh, Robert Loja. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right, Robert Loja. Look up below you. <laughs> yeah, but like even Little Mermaid, which was which I consider to be that like first step toward well, I not just me, but that first step toward that that golden era for Disney, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I mean, there's no one super famous yeah. in the voice cast for that, right? The biggest name yeah. in that one was uh, Kenneth Mars. Yeah, right. And I mean, Beauty and the Beast had more, you know, name recognition. Yeah, and then Beauty and the Beast, you had Robbie Benson. <laughs> and uh, Angela Jerry Lansbury, Orbach. Jerry Orbach, yeah. yep. Angela Lansbury and uh, David Ogden Stiers. Yeah. But this one, you've got Matthew Broderick, you've got James Earl Jones, you've got Jeremy Irons, you've uh, you got Whoopi Goldberg, Roman Atkinson. you've uh, got yeah. huh? mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi mm -hmm. Goldberg, Chase Marin again. Mm -hmm. Um, you have Nathan Lane, you have Ernie Sabella, you have and uh, Robert Guillaume. Right. You have a loaded cast. Mm -hmm. 
it was curious to me though that they didn't let Matthew Broderick do his own singing because he I think he had just won a Tony for best actor in a musical. Mm -hmm. And they did not let him do his own singing. Well, they didn't. They didn't do that a lot back then. Uh, that, that's weird, especially when you have a capable singer. He's mm -hmm. not. He doesn't have a bad voice, especially, you know, because I, I, most of what I know him from musically is the uh, the producers, mm -hmm. and I can easily see him singing, um, you know, his lines in The Lion King. Mm -hmm. But yeah, honestly, I don't think it was. I mean, I could be wrong about this, but it's. I, I think it wasn't until actually Tangled that they actually let the leads sing their own songs. I'm fairly certain a couple of actors yeah. got to sing songs, like, but but again, it wasn't. Yeah, they did. We, we talked about this during the Princess and the Frog, though. That um, it was the first one since Beauty and the Beast where all the voice actors actually get to sing their own songs. Yeah, and you know. But let's talk about why why is this movie so beloved? It's me or we, we God, Mike, whoever, please. I feel like just, me. especially like our generation, it was kind of like that first like real I mean, for most y'all know my history with like watching horror movies and things as a child, but you know, for most people, this was like the first real like drama movie like somebody got murdered <laughs> it was like traumatizing like there was betrayal it was hamlet i mean it was great like yeah. you know to put it in front of children and then the soundtrack was fire like everybody could sing the song it was so memorable so like i think of uh the little mermaid which i watched recently i i can't say that i had seen the little mermaid since i first saw it in theaters up until a couple months ago but i knew the music but I don't think I had ever seen it. But like with The Lion King, I remember seeing it when it came on VHS, we got it. Like it was just one of those things that everybody saw and everyone knew. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there's a reason why Hamlet, you know, as a 400 year old story mm -hmm. holds up, right? And, you know, the, the story itself is older than that. But, you know, when, when you see things based on Hamlet, they they tend to have that emotional resonance with people, even if it's you know a singing lion and a meerkat and a farting warthog. You know, like <laughs> that story still resonates, and and I think the characters are so well developed in such a you know a short film, really, because um, you know even Scar, like man, like what a great character, and how much how much screen time does he actually get? It's amazing. <laughs> you need to see that development in such a, a quick amount of time and such with such short, um, you know, short screen time. Mufasa, like I, this man tears all the time when I think about Mufasa. And now, myself as a parent, when Simba's there, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure. But when Simba's like, "Dad, wake up," and I'm like, "Oh my god, oh no, wake up!" Yeah, this resonates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I just thought of one more voice that we that we forgot to mention for this one. Mm -hmm. Rowan Atkinson. I thought no, I mentioned him. Oh, okay, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I um, did. I did, damn it. <laughs> but, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, well, it's you know like from you know from uh, the you know, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. It, they're all like just like kind of these classical fairy tales here. This was the first one, first Disney movie in a very long time that wasn't based on like a like a like a fairy tale type project it was based on a shakespearean play and i it, i mean that alone it, it kind of gives it more i don't want to say more legitimacy but more of a kind of adult bias i would say mm -hmm. um and i mean this is a it was this is dark a very dark tail um and ugh, it, the the villain's death is is all get out kind of grody yep. yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of grody i um yeah i feel like you know we, we, we talk about kind of the beginning of this renaissance this new renaissance which started with the little mermaid 
it it almost feels like everything builds up to this. This is the plateau of this era because you look at the movies that follow it. It is this steady, you know, give or take. There are better movies. You know, there's like you get the Lion King, then you go down. Pocahontas is a bad movie, straight out. It is a bad movie. Uh, by the way, also the one that they actually thought was going to be their biggest hit. Mm -hmm. The Lion King was an afterthought, which you think about that now. Um, a after after Pocahontas, uh, you had The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is a beautiful movie, but didn't get an audience. Uh, Hercules, which is a fun movie. Uh, Mulan, you know, you, you had some really good, solid stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But you can't, as, as much as I love Hercules, as much as I love Mulan, you can't compare them to The Lion King. The Lion King, artistically, it, it, it's the perfect blend of everything. It looks beautiful. The music is great. The voice acting is superb. Um, the, the story is, it's very real. You know, yeah. uh, you know Todd, you're, you're right about that. Being, you know, being a dad, that is some really real stuff. And that really hits you. Mm -hmm. Which was crazy to me that we actually held off on showing our kids uh, Bambi for the longest time because we thought that was going to like affect them, and then we're like, "Kids watch Mufasa die in front of them." I, <laughs> fine. Uh, I mean, fine. This, I mean, literally, this was a the plateau, especially if you look at the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I mean, this movie kind of after this movie. We had you had Frank Wells die as the president of um, the president of Walt Disney Company. Yeah, like three months before this movie was released. Yeah, you had um, Michael Eisner have like a pretty serious medical condition. I think he had a heart attack. He had a massive heart attack. Right, and you had um, this was like this was the nail in the coffin for the relationship between Michael Eisner and um, Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Kastenberg. Yeah, they they, they literally. Uh, he was literally fired pretty much the day that this movie was released. Yeah. So, I mean, you had, you know, from when Michael Eisner and Frank Wells were hired, you had this beautiful moment where everything clicked. And then this this movie happened, and then everything fell apart afterwards. Yeah. Literally. Mm -hmm. Nick and Todd, have you guys actually seen uh, Waking Sleeping Beauty? No. On Disney Plus? Nick, have you seen it? It's... this fantastic documentary about the the dark age of Disney and how they they kind of got that back and all the stuff that Mike just uh, talked about with the death of Frank Wells the um you know the souring of the relationship with Jeffrey Katzenberg that's all featured in it and it's on Disney plus <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we've watched so much Disney plus during this uh, this quarantine that every time we watch a new one, my daughter and I just snap at the same time. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Plus hat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I apologize to the audience. I usually have my flowing locks going, but I was having a really bad hair day today. Yeah, Todd, rub it in. I it's did it pretty good. Four rules. It's not possible. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad that the bottom half of the uh, <laughs> got amazing hair going. Mike and I yeah. both have Disney hats on. I mean, you've got your, you can tell what that is, but I'm going to bring this up to the camera a little bit. This oh, has become okay. my go to favorite hat that I, I own. I love this thing because I'm such like classic Mickey is one of my spirit animals. <laughs> so I, um, I was like, and you know what? I've got a Disney hat. I'll wear that instead. And I got my Lion King shirt. So Nick and I are matching. And I got this hat from my lovely girlfriend, Jonna. Oh, that's very sweet. Oh. And I like the shirt you're wearing right now, Mike. Tell them where you got that. I got that at Key Public. Awesome. Did you use keyword uh, Geek Salad Podcast to find that shirt, Mike? I did indeed. Bravo. Excellent. Anyway, back to the Lion King. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think... No, let me let me ask you guys this about the music of it because you know as, as Nick mentioned the soundtrack is absolute fire. Do you think that it was a good idea to have a different team write the songs than did the music? Because I think this is the first time in this. What the what? Uh, no, sorry, my watch just went weird. Um, do you think it was a good idea? Because for the most part, like starting with the Little Mermaid, 
Alan Menken, if, if Alan Menken was writing the songs, he was also providing the score for the movie. Yeah. This was different. This was uh, Tim Rice and Elton John doing the songs, and then Hans Zimmer winning his only Oscar. Mm -hmm. Well-deserved. Well-deserved as well. Yeah. He's just, he's amazing. Um, for me personally, I mean, considering how great the movie is on both fronts, I, I think it was a great idea. And we see where like Lion King stands. Like when you think of some of the best Disney soundtracks ever, it's one of them that comes up like outside of the score, the soundtrack itself. Like you literally cannot hear like, I'm going to be a mighty king and not finish the song. Like as soon as <laughs> I start, you're like, oh shoot, this is my jam. Like that's just how you are. The circle of life, like no one really knows what the words are for the beginning. But everybody is like, in another thing you right, like everybody does it and it's one of those things where i think that it was a great move on their part yeah. uh, Nick, do you own cats do i own it do have no do you have cats i'm sorry you own cats do you have any cats at home no i don't me and cats are arch nemesis <laughs> oh okay Much of a cat. i'm a major on a cat land around around there right now but yeah. for cat owners, it's it's you have to do this. It's a rite of passage. You have to take the cat and hold them up and. Ah, ah. <laughs> Only one and of my cats. Cat. Cat. Does not stop with cats. I did that to Lily when she was a baby. I do that. Yeah. I did that with Scarlett and James. <laughs> yeah, I've done it with babies, right but not animals. <laughs> yeah. It's never a good thing though when you hold them over a, a cliff like that while you're doing it. No, not not really. Yeah. You look like blanket and Michael Jackson. It looks yeah. <laughs> you look very bad, you know. <laughs> he, he was a Mandarin. He had very good grip strength. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the circle of life. I mean, do you remember watching the trailer for the very first time? That's all it was. That's it was all it was. The opening the thing, like, of the movie was your trailer. That was your selling point. And it worked. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Which is Interesting because it doesn't highlight it doesn't highlight any character characters, um, especially Jeremy Irons, who what I mean the guy had already won an Oscar by this point, but what a career defining performance that was. Mm. So it really made like because of that he got Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh, oh was that was that after? Yeah, it was after ninety five. Yep. Yeah. But what I think is like most unique between about like the uh, the difference between the song score and the score is that like usually when you have like when you had the Alan making you you would like detect little notes of like the actual songs in you know kind of mixed in with the score kind of let link everything together. This one, the songs are very different from the score. It's not a bad thing. It's just a different choice. Yeah, I think the only time they really recall that is when he's taking his place mm -hmm. on Pride Rock because you can hear like a really heavy orchestral version of Can You Feel the Love Tonight. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, listening to that that piece of that score, I shivers in tears every single time because I can just picture the, you know the, the paw is going up. Yeah. I just just remembering it just mm, shivers. It's <laughs> such a great moment. It, it is my all-time favorite piece of, mu of movie score. Hands down. Impressive. So, uh, Todd, I'll start with you. What is your favorite song from this movie? Todd? Uh, Frozen? Mm -hmm. Who's Todd? <laughs> okay, he's yeah, I think he froze up. Oh, dear. All right, so while he comes back, Nick, what is your favorite... Uh... Oh, my gosh. Uh... <laughs> So I think it would be a toss up for me between the circle of life and scar song, be prepared. Oh, um, so I'm a huge scar fan. Like I love villains. I've, I've kind of explained them before. I love villains and scar is like, just my, I, I, I felt scar. Like I was like, why are y'all just showing up at his house like this for no <laughs> reason? Like leave him alone. So, yeah. You know, but his song and um, it was actually the thing I was most disappointed in in the remake was Scar's Scar's character and his song. So, in the animated one, it's it's be prepared and then the circle of life because it's just so iconic. 
I actually, I it was just this year that I re, that I discovered that. Um, oops, let me remove the old Todd and add the new Todd. Internet is up. There he is. Back. <laughs> right. Now Nick's over here. Okay, great. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, Nick, continue your. I'm uh, sorry, actually, Mike, what were you saying? Yeah, I, I was. I was just this year when I discovered that it wasn't Jeremy Irons that sang "All of Be Prepared." I he, he it sang bits and pieces, but it was actually Jim Cummings. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. I learned that on an episode of a certain podcast. Yeah, I think I think it might have been very interesting. Wonder what that could have been. Anyway, um, I don't Nick, know. I have no idea about your affinity to um, Disney villains. I have to ask you: Have you played the board game Villainous? I haven't, and I only recently was um, introduced to it to the board game. So I'm super interested now um to play it because it's not just disney villains pretty much any movie i watch i give the villain the benefit of it <laughs> <laughs> we have the um the 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 starter kit really for villainous yes okay. um but uh scar is in the expansion in one of the expansions okay okay he's so, in one of the expansions as well so who uh isma from uh oh, okay. the in the groove mm-hmm there's actually quite a few of them. It's it's worth picking up if you like um, board games, especially games where there's a lot of strategy involved. I would like to try it, especially during I, the time when I don't have anything else to do. Like if you are going to be, you know, are you still with your at your folks' house? Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're with your folks, go on Amazon, you know, because you can only do so many puzzles. Um, but yeah, order some board games. You'll have a great time. For Todd, yes. Favorite song from The Lion King. Was it my favorite song from What's The Lion King? Favorite song. Oh boy, um, it's definitely "Be Prepared" in a, in a landslide. Nice. Yep. There yeah, we I'm go. Not alone with that. Um, I I do enjoy Rowan Atkinson singing. So just can't wait to be king is up there because I do love his parts. And then at the very end, when the rhino sits on him, is might be my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> Love it, mm. but you know they they are all very memorable in yep. their own way. Um, as a you know when this movie came out as a nine year old boy, I would like to skip uh, "Can You Feel the Love Tonight" because I was a nine year old boy. You yeah. know, um, to get to you know go back to Hakuna Matata or whatever. You know, it was just that wasn't my thing. I certainly um, you know it's it's grown on me, obviously. As I've matured, so yeah. Like when he was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog, there it is. <laughs> um, Mike, favorite song? Um, probably. I mean, I love Circle of Life. I I, I love pretty much all the songs on this, but my favorite would probably be "Can You Feel the Love Tonight." Okay. Mm -hmm. Primarily for one verse, one short verse, actually. Which one's um, that? It's the 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 one verse that Nala sings because mm -hmm. oh, the holding back he's hiding. Yeah, not Nala's singing voice is it's just, for some reason I just find it the most beautiful singing voice ever. It is fantastic, and the way you know, and especially what she sings is very emotionally impactful in that moment. Yeah, so. Um, I just love the whole scene and the song is just fantastic Add addition to it. So, Gotcha. I'm just learning right now that Moira Kelly was the speaking voice mm -hmm. of, of Nala. Oh. And I, I'm going back, like, I'm on IMDb right now looking at this cast list. And you know, for a movie set in Africa. <laughs> That's why they did the remake the way they did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, well, hey, I mean, I, there's a word coming to mind here that uh, just. <laughs> to be fair, though, when you get James Earl Jones, you got the king right there. Well, you, yeah, you do. Um, I, I think for my favorite song, it's got to be Hakuna Matata uh, because I've always loved the song. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've always loved Nathan Lane. Um. So, and I think we were walking behind Ernie Sabella when we went to Broadway about like 15 years ago to go see Man of La Macha that he was in. We were walking towards the theater and then like this guy who looked just like 
Ernie Sabella walks out of a deli right in front of us and is just walking into the theater and goes into the back of the theater. I'm like, I think that was Ernie Sabella. <laughs> I just, I love the song because it's a lot of fun. Um, and it takes, it takes the down point in the movie, the most tragic thing that you're going to see this entire movie. How do you liven that back up? And, and you have this great song mm -hmm. um, to liven you back up with, with these great new characters um, whenever, whenever we listen to that, in the car, we have the entire family there, um, during, during the bridge of the song before they go into the, uh, the last verse with adult, um, oh, good Lord. Why well, can't I remember Simba. his name? Adult Simba. We all do the little head thing. The mm -hmm. little... And we get it, we get it down. Everyone starts on the left now, which is great. So. Mm -hmm. I love that song. It's my favorite song to sing is Akuna Matata. It's such a fun song. I, I really like that song. And and part of why it's not my favorite probably has to do with the structure of the film and um it the transition from kid to adult Simba happens too quickly for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just on that log over the span of one day. Um <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it rushed it that that song rushes the story for me. Mm -hmm. Why it's not one of my favorite it's not my favorite song in the in the in the film. Yeah. And I, you know, and obviously I know the remake was was trying to be faithful to the original. I have my own opinions on the remake, but um you know, it was the exact thing. And I was like, oh, this would have been an opportunity to change mm -hmm. something up a little bit, but I understand why they did it. Yeah. yeah. I, I still have not seen the the remake yet. Yeah, nor have I. I, I actually did watch a clip. I watched the uh, the clip of "Can You Feel the Love Tonight" okay. because I wanted to hear how Beyonce's version, Beyonce singing, would be. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually prefer the uh, the animated version of her voice more. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things where, of all the things that they could have remade, I I personally wish that they hadn't done the Lion King because. In my opinion, it's one of their most iconic ones. It's and like if you looked at the new generation of Disney, it's like if they did a live action version of Frozen. Like I don't want to see that. Like Frozen's perfect. I don't right. want to see it live. The Lion King is pretty perfect. I don't want to see it live. And so I appreciate what they did. And unlike everybody else who's like, oh, well, it's a lion that looks real, but I wanted to also have cartoon faces. I appreciated that parts of it looked like National Geographic. <laughs> Yeah. I also like if it never happened, as much as I love Beyonce and anybody <laughs> with that, if it never happened, I would have been just okay with that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I yeah. I had seen the side by side of the animated and the well, it's, I don't know why we call it live action. It's photorealistic. <laughs> right. <live action. laughs> animated. Um right. <laughs> of, of Hakuna Matata. Mm -hmm. And it's just animals walking in their regular gait with their little mouths moving. Mm -hmm. And that was it. There was none of that cartoon express expressiveness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did. I, 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 in the clip that I watched, I did get a kick out of the uh, expansion of. Oh, um, my froze up. What's up? Yep. Yeah. Uh, in the clip that I saw, I, I did like the expansion of um, uh, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, Pomona and Pumbaa were probably the best part of <laughs> the live action remake, honestly. They were fantastic. Again, I think it's just one of those things where if you're going to do something photorealistic or live action, it shouldn't be animals because you either have to do it cartoonish or you have to do it with where it looks like an animal, right? And so it's like, I would rather just, if you're going to do live action, like how they're doing Mulan, where they're completely just like, revamping it and it's not just a live version of the cartoon version i think that's where they should kind of stick yeah. to you know it lost it's funny to say it lost the humanity yeah of the animated version you know mm -hmm. beautiful absolutely gorgeous and like a feat of filmmaking mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. unnecessary completely unnecessary yeah, yeah agree. unnecessary <laughs> yeah anyway yeah. back in time 25 years Wow, 25 years. Oh my God. 26. Uh, 26 years. 94. 26 as of this month, actually. It came out in April. Did it? Why do I remember this movie coming out in the summer? 
Did I say I saw this in elementary school? I meant I saw it before I was born. <laughs> like, that's uh, take a look right now. Take a look right now at the release date here. Thank you, IMDb. I already have it up. Uh, release date, June 24th, 1994. Why the hell did Google tell me it was April? Maybe that was the first preview. Yeah, maybe. Or you're looking at the death of Frank Wells. Frank Wells died in, in April of uh, 94. Hmm? No, I, I said, uh, you know, well, I, I'm not going to say it now because it's going to respond to me with its lies. <laughs> lies. <laughs> um, is there anything about this movie that doesn't work in your eyes? I mean, you, we've had over 25 years now to kind of think about that. We've watched this multiple times. Is there anything that just like doesn't sit right or doesn't feel right or just is kind of weird in its overall execution or yeah, I... go ahead man. oh no, i was just gonna say for me the biggest thing that i always come back to is um the fact that simba was allowed to hang around scar the way he was by himself and like it did it seemed like Scar kind of hung around, but you know, traditionally with lions, there's like kind of one main dude, and then you know, the the other dudes kind of go off on their own or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so like he's still around. It doesn't seem like him and Mufasa have a great relationship or Mufasa really trusts him, but he just like lets Simba go and hang out with him on his own without Zazu, without any guards or whatever. And so, like, the fact that he, like, got murdered and all this and, you know, he was set in this gorge and just all the ways that it's set up, I'm always like, but why was Simba with him, though? <laughs> like, <laughs> why was he with him? Like, that's the thing that always kind of gets me. It's like, maybe if I understood a little bit more of, like, why he would allow that, you know? So. Yeah. A decidedly unsuitable uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Especially one that is not exactly subtle in his I should be king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you stole that position for me. I didn't come to the birth of your son announcement yeah. because I'm jealous. And, you know, I really, I would kill you for that spot. And I'll give you a veil <laughs> threat right, right before you leave. You know? <laughs> yeah. don't, you know, don't turn your back on me. Was right. that a threat? No, no, it was a threat. Okay. Well. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a threat. <laughs> I shall practice well, my currency. Well, well, I mean, the score does say that Mufasa didn't get the lion's share of the knowledge of the, uh, of the brains. The right. brains, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Todd. Yeah, for me, it it really is all about story structure and and pacing. Like I mentioned before, with Hakuna Matata, that feels rushed. Simba's whole epiphany feels rushed as well to me. Yeah. Um, as well as just you know, okay, he's he's back, he's determined, he's focused. I can understand that. But then it just, it cuts right to the the very end, the climax. I feel like they're, they could have let that breathe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I get it, it's 1994, it's an animated kids movie. You gotta hold people's attention, but um, you know, the, the Shakespearean actor in me wants a little more um, development there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Mike? Um, I would say my my biggest kind of issue about about it would be um the fact that Simba yeah he, he's destined to be king he never really shows any kingly ability though. Uh, he was I mean, born to be king. Yeah, he was born to be king as part of the circle of life, but he's kind of a spoiled kid. Sees his father die, runs off, and then spends the rest, the most of the rest of his life for just kind of hanging around with a uh, meerkat and a farty wood warthog, doing <laughs> nothing, just hanging around. And then, oh, well, now he's king, and he's going to be good at it? Maybe? <laughs> Hopefully? Hey, Maybe he that... made the fire stop and the grass grow again, so. Mm -hmm. well, no, that's part of the circle of life. Yeah. All with a single roar. Wow. <laughs> Power. I, I get it. It, it. It's just it's kind of just part of the whole like fairy tale story in a sense. But it just just factually speaking, he doesn't seem like the best pick for a king. I'd rather have like Nala or you know what? Hell, bring in Sarabi. Let her take over. 
Mm-hmm. Sarabi mm-hmm. was like, oh, when I think about Sarabi and like how she like just never let Scar have his way, I love her so much. So, yeah, <laughs> Sarabi, Sarabi was the untold hero of that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, I think for me, it's, it's, I don't know if it's more of a nitpick than anything else, but just like Todd about just the kind of like the thematic structure of it. I felt like sometimes some of the musical numbers do go a little too much over the top. Um, when I think about that, I, I usually think of uh, the like the, the climax to I just can't wait to be king. Where, you know, you've got all the chorus lines of all the different animals going and then they're all stacked up together. And it's like, yeah. You have to learn to where you want to do your musical stuff because like, <laughs> Can you feel love tonight? Uh, the circle of life are just straight musical narration almost. Um, Kuna Matata's got a couple of little flourishes of that, but not nearly as bad. And um, I really can't complain that much about Be Prepared because I just love what they did with that. You know, just, you know, all the fascist uh, hyenas. <laughs> <laughs> they are clearly goose stepping. They yeah. are. <laughs> Very clearly goose stepping. You know, we talk about and not indigenous to the area of the world. <laughs> I was going to say one song that it's so short and then they cut it from the live animation, and which I understood why because of the whole line or whatever. But he's like, what do you want me to do? Just in drag and do the hula? And then they like do the like very, very short number. That's actually like top on my list of like musical. It's so short, but it's like my favorite, one of my favorite moments, that whole thing. <laughs> I I have to fall. I have to sing along with the yup yups. <laughs> you have to. You like can't not do it. That's the thing about this movie is it doesn't matter what song is played, whether it's your favorite or not. You're going to sing along with it. Um, and I don't think, for me personally, I don't think that there is a another Disney movie where every single song I'm gonna sing along to. Like I I thought it was uh, Frozen, but that's a matter of my niece being three years old when it came out and wanting to watch it every day that I know yeah. it, not enjoying it. So, you know what I mean? So nobody can fix your upper Todd. Can you attest to that? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> as, as dads of girls. Yeah. No, nobody ever can fix her upper. If, um, if I could sing Polynesian, I'd probably sing along with Moana, but yeah, I, oh, I, do. Well, I guess I sing along with, but that's like, when I think Disney pick is Disney Pixar kind of thing, I think mm-hmm. so. I kind of put that like over here. So okay. yeah, yeah, it's Disney adjacent. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I and, and that's the thing. You know, you, you were talking about Moana being like imminently singable as well. It's the best sounds song score since The Lion King. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I get that. I I totally get that. Um, now I'm I'm sure we've all seen the extended cut of the animated movie. It's like what was released on DVD when it came out. Like no. What was added? Huh? The Morning Report. Yes, The Morning Report. Oh. A song that needed to have been cut. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Okay. Um, like they let, they <laughs> let Rowan Atkinson sing. It's just, you know, the um, Zazu is just going over the agenda with uh, Mufasa. Okay. Yeah, such a powerful name, Mufasa. Uh, um, and they had they had finished the animation for it watched it and like this doesn't work for the structure of the theatrical release film it ended up in the musical mm-hmm. and then they, they re-put it back in when they when they put the extended cut out uh, when they released it on, on DVD back in like the early 2000s I, I love Rowan Atkinson but I'd rather keep him limited to singing It's a Small World and I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I mean, I can put my hand up for this one. Have Have y'all seen the Broadway musical? Not live. Okay. Yeah. Todd? No, I haven't. No? I'm sheltered. Wow. My- seen the Lion saw- show in Animal Kingdom. Does that yeah, well, I'm just going to bring that one up. Yeah, I've seen the Lion King show in my Animal Kingdom. Love it. Yeah, have you seen yeah. that one? Rick? No, I haven't seen that one. It's actually it's it's a wonderful way to spend forty five minutes, mm-hmm. especially because Animal Kingdom is the most unbearably hot park on on property. 
So funny story, we went to um, Disney like a couple years ago. My niece was like three or four and we were in Animal Kingdom and I had also um, auditioned for their American Idol experience. So as I'm in line, it's like taking so long. And then I had to go to be like in the show at Disney. (laughs) So it was like this thing. And so I'm, I missed the whole Animal Kingdom experience, which wow. I was sad about because that's the one I wanted to to visit. But the time I was there, it was very hot. I will agree with that. It was scorching. We didn't make it till five. We didn't make it to five o'clock at Animal Kingdom. I mean, we can go. I mean, you you go to Disney with my family. Be prepared for a long day. But Animal Kingdom was like, I want to go back to the resort now. I. <laughs> take this heat anymore <laughs> actually and um out at uh out in uh california adventure out in disneyland um they do they don't have like a big you know huge lion king stage show but they do have um like this thing where it's like right in, in the kind of like the main center part they've got a um it's just a troop of people that you know one of them's you know one of them is scar but he's just a guy with like a very like a furry vest with like a, a necklace of teeth. Yeah. And, you know, he'll sing Be Prepared and uh, they'll kind of like vaguely retell The Lion King with all the songs. And they'll do that in about, eh, about 20, 25 minutes or so. All right. It's, it's a, it's a fun little show for, if you got a, if you got a moment. I'm envisioning him like grabbing like a handful of like orange sand and throwing it up into the air. And there's your story. <laughs> No, nah, it, it, it's cool. It, it, you know, it's, it's it, I'm sure you can find a video of it on YouTube. Speaking of Scar Jackets, do you know that Scar is an Easter egg in Hercules? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe mine. Brilliant. And, and I think Pumbaa is like roasting on a spit in one of the movies. How dare they? Uh, I want to say Mulan. <laughs> that would make sense. I, I don't know. The fat warrior would probably be the one to do it too. Wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> That's so rude. Everyone else, everyone else is say, thinking about uh, a girl with fighting for it. He's all about like who can cook. <laughs> That's all he wanted. That's all it. he wanted: chicken and pork. <laughs> so, uh, so any um any parting thoughts on the Lion King um, other than that this you know this is a stone cold classic of an animated film, um I mean Mike when we did our our top uh, Disney films a few years ago this was like what number two or three no this was I think it was our number one it, it was certainly in the top five I, I would have to go back I think, and I think it. it was number one because it would have either been this Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast yeah yeah I, I mean. Barely certain it was the Lion King. I mean, to be fair, any one of those you can't go wrong. Right. But I am I am genuinely shocked that this one, like if Beauty and the Beast got nominated, I I could see why Aladdin might not have been, but I am genuinely shocked this one didn't get nominated. 1994 was a weird year for movies, if you remember the five nominees for Best Picture and the eventual winner. Uh, I don't, but I'm sure you do. Forrest Gump won. Oh. But it was the year that Pulp Fiction like broke the indie scene. Mm, and okay. then, you know, you had uh, Shawshank Redemption. You had, uh, mm. and then you had a couple of other movies, like just typical Oscar bait movies, like a uh, quiz show and uh, four weddings and a funeral was a nominee that year. Mm. So, yeah, I, I'm actually surprised Lion King didn't take that slot, but you know, and this is before they actually offered the, uh, the animated feature Oscar as well. Mm-hmm. And before they expanded the best picture to, to you know, yeah, up to 10. 10. Right. Yeah, that wouldn't happen for another 14 years. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. But yeah. have you um, ever seen the comparisons of this to Kimba? Kimba, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. So, like, whenever I think about this, I'm like, hmm, it's great. But, like, also, was it is this like gentrified Kimba? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so. Well, at least it wasn't dragging Mufasa's uh, corpse around the desert as well. <laughs> well, it's Disney. They had to come on, Dad. <laughs> 
but yeah, I just I just remembered that. I the, I was just exposed to that on Twitter, actually. Twitter that gives me everything. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, Twitter. But if I need if my daily dose of toxic fandom, Twitter. That's where you go. All you have to do is just say Star Wars. You don't even have to finish it or put anything yeah. Star Wars with a question mark and people will come. There's a girl in a Star Wars movie. <gasps> <laughs> well, when I did my watch, you would be surprised at how many people like came for me. Like it would be in my DMs like coming for me for like any comments that I had that they didn't like about Star Wars. Ugh. Nobody hates Star Wars like a Star Wars fan. <laughs> Which is interesting because our, our next show, we're actually going to be discussing uh, the the Disney era of Star Wars movies. So stay tuned for that one. That'll be fun and I'm probably going to be drinking. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but you usually do. Yeah, thanks for mentioning my problem on air, Mike. Appreciate it. Hey, that's what friends of friends are for, man. Jeez. <laughs> so any other thoughts on Lion King? Yeah, I it holds up. It really <laughs> does. I watched it not too long ago and and I loved it then. I love it now. You know, my structure problems aside. Um, it's become a pop culture, you know, it's it's kind of ingrained in in my childhood and, and yeah. my adulthood too. Um there's one, I was a huge, I'm, I'm still a huge Simpsons fan, but growing up, huge Simpsons fan, and the episode where Bleeding Gums Murphy dies. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you have James, you know, you have Mufasa and Darth Vader, and, like, it's just, you know, I, I, I would put Mufasa up there with Darth Vader as, you know, that's James Earl Jones for me. It's it's both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's not just Darth Vader. It's, it's also Mufasa. There's also a um, a video I discovered recently, and I don't know how you feel about plugging other people's YouTube stuff, but Go ahead. Um, it's a, an, a YouTube animator named Cass Vanderpoel, mm -hmm. and it's called the Ultimate Lion King Recap Cartoon. It's the Lion King in two minutes, and it's absolutely hysterical, yep. absolutely hysterical. Mm -hmm. So um, when you post this, Mike, I'll, I'll, um, I'll throw the link up there on uh, on Facebook as well. So we're actually live. So. I don't know what actually live. Uh, well, well, right. to me. live comments. Let me find it and I'll I'll put it in the live comments. Hmm. Um, but it, it, it's hilarious. So you know, nice. check that out too. Nice. Love the movie. It's powerful. Holds up. Nice. Nice. So um, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Yeah. Now. Throughout the month of April, we had a poll both on Twitter and on Facebook asking what how we're going to close out uh, our Disney month next week. Uh, we gave you the choice of five different movies. Uh, your choices were Hercules, The Great Mouse Detective, Beauty and the Beast, and The Black Cauldron. That's four. That's four. I, I'm sorry. Did I say five? I meant four because that's all Twitter would allow us to have on there. Yeah. God, I hate Twitter polls. So... The winner of uh, this week's um, of, of next week's Twitter movie is. I didn't see this one coming. What's that? I didn't see this one coming. Yeah, no, I I didn't see this one coming either. Uh, let's see if that's it right there. I'm trying to we're trying to share the screen right now. Wrong one. Yeah, and all right, it will. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Uh, it will be the Black Cauldron. I thought I thought Beauty and the Beast had it locked. To be honest, I uh, yeah. <laughs> In all honesty, um, be uh, am I still uh, sorry? Technical issue here. Am I not sharing the screen anymore? No. All right. Good. 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 Um, it popped up and then it went away. Okay. Yes. Um, in all honesty, it was it was a. Dogfight between Hercules and the Black Cauldron. I didn't use enough bot accounts, bot accounts to vote. That's what happened. I was trying oh. to get Hercules up there for you guys. <laughs> oh, it was okay because I was honestly <laughs> convinced it was going to be the Great Mouse Detective. No, I, you didn't hear me. I was like plugging you guys this poll, but I was also telling people to vote for Hercules. So I was like, you guys should vote for whatever you want. But that should be Hercules. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I I would have been more than happy to do Hercules. 
I mean, as it is, I I haven't seen. I mean, I remember having fond memories of the Black Cauldron, but I haven't seen it in probably more than twenty years. I, I wonder if there's a, a place where we could watch it. I wonder. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. I, I I got I got nothing. We think that. Yeah, I, I, we got nothing. <laughs> yeah. So that was the Lion King. Thank um, you, thank Nick, you. thank you so much for coming. Uh, of course. I okay. love having you on this show. You had such. You add a lot to these, and I really appreciate that. So do you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I guess he does, sure. So, yeah. Nick, tell us where we can find you uh, on the interwebs. Well, guys, you can find us. We have a website, Black Girls Do Stuff 2. Our Instagram and our YouTube, it's also Black Girls Do Stuff 2. We're most active on Twitter, though, and that is BLK Girls Do Stuff. So come, and I run it, so come talk to me. I'll crack jokes and talk about Chris Evans all day. So <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And uh, you can find me, Mike and Todd at uh, geek salad. Uh, we're available whenever, wherever you can get your podcasts. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter at geek salad radio and on Facebook at geek salad podcast. Uh, don't forget with this video, uh, let us know what you thought about the Lion King. Did you like it? Not a big fan. Where does it rank in your favorite Disney movies? Leave a civil comment below. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, because we put out tons of great content. Um, actually, Mike, how, what, what do you think the ETA is for our latest podcast episode? Um, if I really push it tonight, but more than likely tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Because as part of Disney Month, uh, Todd, Mike, and I, as well as our uh, co-hosts, Joe and Catherine, discussed the covers of Disney songs that appear at the end credits of the Disney animated movies. I'm excited to hear this episode. Oh, I, You know what? I was thinking about this one all day. And I'm like, my mouth was watering. I want to hear this <laughs> one because it was a great conversation when we recorded it. And Mike is doing the editing on this one. So I can't wait to hear it. Mike has been sending me so many little, um, little bitchy comments about <laughs> one of these songs. Yeah, there, there, was, there was one that we had to do that I I really didn't want to listen to it. Yeah. Again. it was we so... don't want to spoil it for anybody what it is, but oh, I am so awful. happy that our, uh, our group here is a unified front on, on that song. Mm -hmm. um, I, can't wait. I cannot wait to hear yeah. this episode. Like, oh. When you first announced it, I was super excited about it. So, oh, well, so, so we'll, we'll let you know when that comes up. Also, uh, Nick, speaking of new episodes, you guys just had one hit today. We did. Uh, we covered the show Insecure, which comes on HBO. Um, it's on its fourth season. And so we are, we discussed the first two episodes of that, but then kind of segued into just like being insecure adults. Like, do we even feel like, I, I don't feel like an adult. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Whoever feels like they're grown up, I still call my mom and dad for everything. So, <laughs> you know, things like that, dating, like finances, just a little bit of everything. So this goes into our lifestyle topics. And as always, we're like joking through the whole thing. But, you know, I think it's very relatable to everyone. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, um, I saw it was up there. I'm like, I need time to listen to stuff. I usually take like a long walk. Mm -hmm. Like actually, I took this week off because it's the kids' school vacation, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was it didn't get over forty degrees today, so I did not take a walk today. Mm. That sounds terrible. I don't know how it is out where you are, but here it's freezing. No, it's like fifties, like fifties oh. here, fifties, sixties. I would take fifties or sixties. I I will not take another forty degree day though, and I don't know if we've got more of those coming up because we do. This it's the world we live in. Yeah, Friday, Friday is supposed to be rainy with with and chilly. Can't wait. Sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm taking Friday off actually. So, oh, you have Friday off? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So, Nick, thanks again so thanks much for joining us. Todd, we'll see you next week when we discuss Star Wars. Sounds great, Hakuna Matata, my dudes. Uh, Hakuna Matata, Hakuna yeah. Matata. Yeah. And until next time, I'm Mandy. I'm Mike. Go forth, be nerdful, and Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I wish I